Is your super healthy diet, even your whole foods plant-based diet, actually giving you cancer instead of preventing it? In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a danger that is actually lurking in some of our favorite health foods. And because we're not about doom and gloom here, I'm also going to go over some tips on how you can reduce your exposure to this danger while also enjoying all the healthy foods you love. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time researcher with my PhD, here to share studies to help you reach your fitness, health, nutrition, and general wellness goals. And the danger I'm talking about in today's video is arsenic. So first I'm going to go over why we should care about it, where it comes from, what the main foods are that it affects, and how to avoid it while still eating what we want. So first, arsenic is a heavy metal which is very toxic. It's a lot like lead. So as you probably know, lead is terrible for us. Arsenic is also terrible for us. It causes all sorts of cancers, even in small amounts, especially lung, bladder, and skin cancer. And regular exposure to small amounts of arsenic also increases your risk of type 2 diabetes and stroke and high blood pressure and kidney disease and skin lesions. And if you're pregnant, it's really bad for the fetus. And in kids, it's really bad for their development, especially the development of their brain. And it's even been implicated in autism. So arsenic is really bad. <laughs> Let's just get that out of the way. And the reason we have to worry about it and why it's in some of our foods is that chickens were fed arsenic-based antibiotics for a very long time. And so all of the waste from chicken farming and all that arsenic that was in the chicken system ended up in the soil and in the water, where it is now contaminating our crops and other foods, like in the ocean. And another source of arsenic has been the use of arsenic-based pesticides, especially on cotton. And the main source of dietary arsenic in general is fish. So even though fish is often touted as a big health food, I think it's pretty well established now that fish is full of heavy metals, so we're not really going to talk about fish today. But unfortunately, the second highest source of arsenic in our diet is rice. So today I'm going to be talking about rice. And I am a huge rice lover. So if you are too, don't worry, I'm right there with you. I'm going to help you through this. I had to go through this emotional journey myself when learning all of the science, but hopefully I can help you enjoy your rice while also getting less arsenic. And specifically in this video, I will be talking about how arsenic levels drastically differ between different types of rice, how to reduce arsenic in whatever type of rice you enjoy, some other grain options out there that are very low in arsenic, and then finally what I do, given that I love rice and I do not love arsenic. So stick around till the end if you want to see the light at the end of the tunnel for avoiding this very toxic element in our food. Arsenic is contaminated pretty much all of our soil and water to some extent at this point, and rice is just really good at taking it up, unfortunately. And specifically, rice really stores a lot of arsenic in the bran, which is that outer layer that forms the delicious, healthy, nutty part of brown rice. So in terms of how arsenic levels drastically differ between different types of rice, one of the biggest, most consistent differences is that brown rice has about 80% more arsenic than white rice, which is really sad given that brown rice itself, minus the arsenic, is way healthier than white rice. I'll help walk you through some of this confusion in a little bit though. You may be surprised to learn that whether or not rice is organic actually doesn't matter for arsenic, but the biggest factor in determining how much arsenic rice is going to have, besides brown versus white, is actually where it's grown. Rice that is grown in California, India, and Pakistan is way better in terms of arsenic levels than rice that is grown in the rest of the US. And sushi rice and basmati and jasmine rice all tend to be better than other types of rice for arsenic levels. Specifically, white basmati rice from California, India, or Pakistan, as well as sushi rice from anywhere in the U.S., has about half the level of arsenic as all other types of rice. So those are some of the lowest arsenic options you could go for. And in terms of the worst sources of rice, the biggest offenders are Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana. And keep in mind, this is about where the rice was grown, not where you're buying it from. And in addition to those big three states, pretty much any state besides California is gonna have pretty high arsenic rice besides sushi rice. So California has about 40% less arsenic in their rice than all of the states in the US on average. So just to give a little summary of this 
probably very confusing tip number one about how arsenic levels vary with different types of rice. Your best types of rice are going to be jasmine, basmati, or sushi rice that is grown in California, India, or Pakistan. And your worst rice is going to be brown rice or rice that is grown in Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, or pretty much any state besides California. And for tip number two, I have some science-based suggestions on how you can actually reduce the amount of arsenic in whatever type of rice you enjoy. And the first one is to rinse the rice beforehand. And if you want to go one step further, you can boil the rice in way more water than you actually need to cook it. So kind of like pasta in a six to one ratio of water to rice, and then you drain off the excess water once the rice is done. And studies have shown that this method can reduce arsenic by about 30% on average. So not too bad. And this tip is kind of a spin-off of tip one, which I thought was really interesting. It's a really cool study. They looked at how the arsenic levels in people's water affected how likely rice was to increase their cancer risk. So they found that over everyone, those who ate rice had a lower cancer risk than those who didn't eat rice by 20%. So rice eaters were 20% less likely to get cancer than people who didn't eat rice because rice is good for us. But importantly, in people who had high arsenic water, eating rice actually increased their risk of cancer by 30%. So if you have normal or low arsenic water, rice equals lower cancer risk by a lot. In fact, it would be more than 20% because that 20% figure also included these high arsenic water people. But in people who have high arsenic water, eating rice is going to increase the risk of cancer by about 30%. And what is happening here is that when you have low arsenic water and you rinse your rice or boil it, you're going to be able to get rid of a lot of the arsenic from the rice because it's going to diffuse out into this lower arsenic water and wash away the arsenic. But if you have high arsenic water, then you're not going to be able to lower the levels of arsenic in the rice because it's not going to be able to drain away. And in fact, it might even add more. It's kind of a separate issue, though, because people drinking high arsenic water are already going to be getting cancer from their water. The point is, if you have normal or low arsenic water, then it seems like eating rice is still generally a plus, at least for the types of cancer they looked at in this study, which generally they focus on bladder and lung cancer. And you probably have no idea if your water has arsenic or not. I don't know yet in mine either, but pretty much all universities will do water testing for free or for a small fee. So definitely look into that. You can just type in your nearest university on Google and then water testing and often the extension office will have something or like individual labs in the university. And there are also private water testing companies. And one way to find them when you might not be able to otherwise on Google is to look for well water testing because there have to be a lot of companies for that pretty much anywhere where there's well water or at least a few companies, because well water is very often contaminated with stuff and people need to know. So those are some options for figuring out how much arsenic is in your water. And my last tip for this section is to buy rice from companies who test for the levels of arsenic in their rice. Now this is not sponsored at all, but I only know of one company so far that does this and that is Lundberg. I'll show you what the packaging looks like so you can see, you probably recognize it. I just happen to have the sushi rice, but I actually usually buy rice in bulk at my local co-op, but I am actually probably going to switch to Lundberg. I'll talk about that more in the final segment of this video where I talk about myself and what I do. But yes, yeah, Lundberg tests their rice for arsenic and they have much lower levels than the average, like incredibly low really. It's very exciting that there is an option that is low in arsenic. So yeah, I highly recommend them. Not at all sponsored. They are a little pricier which is why I pretty much never buy them unless I have to, like for the sushi rice. But now that I know that they test for arsenic, I am probably gonna switch to buying them because it's worth it to me even though it costs a little more. And now for the third segment of the video, which is alternative grains. So there are lots of other alternatives to rice that I think most people don't really know about that are super delicious, that you can buy in bulk without breaking the bank and are actually more nutritious than brown rice, or at least a lot of them are. So obviously you should keep eating some rice if you want to, but if you are interested in getting less arsenic and trying out some new fun grains, there are a lot of great options. So first, the main gluten-free options that we know have low arsenic are amaranth, which I'm a huge fan of and post quite a few recipes for on my blog, buckwheat, millet, polenta, and grits, especially if you're in the South, you know what grits are. 
And these are all really good options or alternatives to rice. Of these grains, I think that millet in particular can act a lot like rice because it gets pretty fluffy and it just has a really good flavor, but it's not too strong or anything. So highly recommend millet as well as these other grains if you'd like to try some gluten-free alternatives to rice that are also low in arsenic. And then another one that's kind of on the fence is quinoa, which usually tests low in arsenic, but sometimes it's high in arsenic. So it's kind of varied, but on average it's lower than rice. So do it that way you will. And the third group of alternative grains I'm going to talk about are the grains that have gluten in them. And those are bulgur, barley, and farro, all of which are very low in arsenic. In particular, I'm obsessed with farro. It's probably tied with amaranth for my favorite non-rice grain, and it's super ridiculously healthy. So definitely give farro a try. It's quite similar to rice and its general vibe and ability to fit in all those dishes. Like I've never been disappointed before when I replaced rice with farro. So I highly recommend that. And now for my personal experience, which is probably a bit dramatic because I eat brown rice twice a day on average. And according to the big Consumer Reports article, I don't know if you saw that years ago, but it's still making a big splash. They recommend eating one tenth of the rice I do as the maximum. So I eat 10 times as much rice as they recommend should be the maximum. And that's of brown rice. I just really love brown rice and it's cheap and I am big on budgeting and whatnot because I've been a grad student for five years so I'm kind of always in super budget mode and brown rice has generally been friendly to that but now that I might be getting 10 times the ceiling of arsenic that this pretty credible organization suggests I'm going to tone it down and it's not like I just learned this or anything I've known about arsenic and rice for a while especially brown rice but to be honest I just kind of stuck my head in the sand because the FDA has no official suggestions or limits on arsenic and brown rice. And I already went through a decade of having fear foods, as they say, with my disordered eating phase of binging and restricting and everything. And I'd love to not return to having fear foods. So I just kind of avoided anything that would make me afraid of the food. But I think now that I'm in a very healthy mindset with food, I can go back to some reasonable level of caution with things like heavy metals. So the reason I actually made this video is I was researching arsenic and rice just for my own purposes and I was like, okay, I definitely have to share this with you all. So that's how this came about and why I am now changing my diet to eat less brown rice. So first I'm going to bury my grains more, eat a bit more white rice, eat a lot more farro and amaranth and millet probably. And I'm going to start buying Lundberg rice instead of my usual bulk stuff since it's so much lower in arsenic. I'm also going to start rinsing my rice, but I am far too lazy to boil it like pasta because I don't want to mess with that. I just like to stick it in my rice cooker and forget about it for hours. So I'm still going to do rice cooker, but I'm going to rinse it and use lower arsenic rice and bury my grains more. And in my pursuit of eating alternative grains, I will have to increase my budget for grains. And if you feel like helping with that and supporting me in making my videos, please head on over to my Patreon, even a dollar or two. Would be very useful in my pursuit of farro and millet and amaranth. And for those of you who are in the same boat and eat boatloads of brown rice like I do and are now thinking about switching to more expensive grains, you can think of it this way. It will probably be saving us money on medical bills in the future because we're eating a very healthy diet with lots of whole grains while also avoiding overdosing on arsenic. Please let me know what you thought about this video. Do you eat a ton of brown rice? Are you scared? Do you think it's a hoax? Do you think it's not worth worrying about? I'd love to hear your opinion, whatever it is. Please let me know in the comments below. And if you like the video, please, please like and share it. It makes a huge difference to me in getting this information out there. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.